Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, I think we've waited long enough to see if anyone else is going to come out of bed. I'm really happy to see this place so full and, and that you've all made it here despite the uh, early hour of the morning. Uh, my name is Will Stevenson. Uh, my name is Dick Willow. And we're here to tell you about the uh, KDE4 presence on the next version of OpenSUSE. So, this is the content of the talk. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, KDE's presence on OpenSUSE in general. We're going to talk about uh, specifically about KDE4 on OpenSUSE 11.0. And uh, then we're going to give you a brief demo of uh, how you can get start developing KDE software yourself using scripting languages. And if we get time, we're going to talk about the 1CB process, which is the changes that uh, we and the KDE team have made to the build system, to package management, to make uh, it possible to get a 1CB that holds KDE 3 and KDE 4 in the case of 10.3. So, open to this KDE presence. Here's our little mind map of what we do. Um, four major areas, packaging, uh, upstream work with KD.org, um, product work, and specific applications. All of these, of course, feed into one another, but these are general descriptions. Um, so packaging, we, we package KD, we make sure that on OpenSUSE we always have the freshest KD packages, um, with patches from upstream where we can. So you're really getting, when you get KD, 3.x.y point point or 4.d.q, point point you're not just getting the tarballs, you're also getting the improvements that have been selected from the KD upstream repository um, by ourselves as experts. We provide build service repositories, which give you uh, access to a wide variety of different KD versions, stable, unstable, improved in various ways. Um, and customized versions of Qt. So no matter what you need, you can always get um, variations of KD software that fits your needs. We work on a variety of applications. I'm going to go over them in a little bit detail, but Network Manager, Car Power Save, Carry System Settings, we all have on those. Um, and they're also very active upstream. Um, we're members of the release team of, the, of KD. We set up release schedules, we make decisions about whether uh, software is of sufficient quality to go for a release. Um, and another example there is Dashboard, which is a uh, application, a web application at Deercrote that allows KD developers to see what the state of the repository is by constantly rebuilding all the KD software direct from SPM using the OpenSUSE build service using our packages. And then all that comes together and that goes into OpenSUSE products, which is OpenSUSE 11, which is SLED, which is a live CD, everything which is something you can take with us. So what's the live CD? It is a live CD built using Kiwi, built using packages that come out of the build service, and we make sure it's really regularly updated. I mean, during the KD4 release cycle, we were updating that like twice a week. So you can always get the freshest possible um, KD packages if you want to try them out. Um, and even install that now. And with the way things are going, we've got more and more tools which make it possible to uh, create customized images. So if you have a need for a um, OpenSUSE KD based distribution, you can take the scripts that generate the live CD and customize those to produce applications, application CDs that do what you want. Um, so one example here would be to make a KD SDK CD, which you could boot, um, develop KD with, and then install, and really say to someone, look, discover KD development, this is all you need. It could also be useful for testing the latest fix, for example, if there's a bug report that is very hard to reproduce by us, and can only be reproduced by the reporter, then you can just download a new live CD with the new packages and start just to pull it up and see if the problem here is fixed. For example. And uh, if you can see the bottom there, the URL, if you have anything to do with KD, you've probably heard uh, Stefan Binner's blogs, read Stefan Binner's blogs about this, but there once again is the URL where we store the live CDs. So, build service packages. We have a, a range of different repositories. 
At the moment, these are probably the two most important ones. We've spent some time deciding how to divide up our software into repositories. So you get the benefits of um, a wide range of things and the familiar structure, but also split it up so it's modular, so that if you want to just to get pure KD core packages, you can say go to KD4 stable, that's uh, KD4.0, uh, and install the desktop um, repository, which gives you the basic KDE release cycle packages. If you want something more than that, uh, you can add the extra applications, which is KD Extra Gear, and some other applications which are following the KDE release cycle, so KOffice, but uh, not part of the KDE core modules. To go beyond that, add the community repo, and then you also get the community maintained packages. And uh, I don't know if any of you are interested, I don't know if you've come to any of our uh, IRC meetings, but we have a uh, um, vacancy in the community. We're looking for a, a module maintainer, who, somebody who would maintain this build service module and who would select the cream of the best new KD4 applications and add them to our repository. Which we forgot to mention is that each of those repositories also define patterns, which you can just uh, browse in your Yast or a super GUI. And uh, they provide uh, a basic installation, a default selection, which we uh, suggest to use. And the, the same thing could be done for the community repository, which is currently lacking any patterns. And I think uh, we have to, uh, well, we should provide patterns for, for the community repository as well, so that we can, if we have to select several applications, then we can just uh, install the pattern if you want to. And then we have the same structure repeated for KD 4.1, which is the development branch. So that gets you. Uh, a weekly snapshot of the KD4 branch, uh, all built, all packaged, and um, all tested using the using dashboard as well, so that we know that it actually builds clear, cleanly. So, uh, if you want to track KD development but don't want to build it yourself, that's the way to do it. And then, coming out of that, if you're interested in packaging, if you're interested in tools in KDE. We're having pack uh, some packaging days um, where you can come along, work with us, other experts, learn how to use the build service, and get yourself an account set up and really get led through that process of making packages um, with as much hand holding as you need to make it really easy for you to get into that. So come along to that. That's in April, 4th and 5th, Friday and Saturday. So plenty of opportunities there for you to come and meet us. And as it says there, the build service is not just about OpenSUSE. We thought that we'd provide it, but we're so big and generous that we make it possible for you to package your software for other distributions as well. So I was just talking last night with guys from GNU Step, who are a desktop environment uh, foundation, and they're really big, uh, really positive about coming and packaging for all the distributions that they target using the OpenSUSE build service to provide the build horsepower. So you could do that too if you're into packaging software. Um, now, brief overview of the things that we've done in the KD team. Um, I don't know if you know this, but OpenSUSE employs the most KD developers full time to work on KDE. So, if you were here last year, you would have heard about Kickoff, which I presented it at, which is a start menu. We developed that inside SUSE. We uh, did that using usability experts, and then that's since gone out and been taken over by the community. Uh, it's now a, a part of KDE 4. And we take the, the KD4 community version and do a little bit of improving. So we have to say, if you look at the bottom here, there's a user and host name and uh, a little open source logo there. So just little improvements, patching things like making the uh, highlights here more interesting, more uh, wider, sorry, which makes it easier to use and more usable, we, we feel. So you always get the benefit of improve, our improvements. K Network Manager, that's the old snapshot, uh, screenshot, and uh, it's the control app, work, app for the Network Manager daemon. Uh, and again, that's developed and maintained uh, by OpenSUSE, and every other distribution uses it and benefits from it. Um, and we're working on versions of that to cover both KD4, at the moment where you can use the KD3 applet under KD4, but, when, but by the time KD4.1 comes out, or 11.0, we'll have a KD4 based applet 
and uh, that will cover both Network Manager 0.6, so for other distributions which are still using Network Manager 0.6, you can benefit from that, or 0.7, which we're going with. Um, in KPowerSave, it's your application which does your suspend to disk, your resume, manages your brightness, manages your process throttling. Um, uh, Danny Kukovka in the mobile devices team, he maintains that. Um, and that's going to become the standard power management tool for KDE4. Uh, system settings, it's used by all of KDE4. Um, we put time into that before the KDE4 release to make that usable, to make that stable. Um, and generally bring it up to the standards that people demand of like, such a core piece of functionality. Uh, it's, it's probably worth mentioning that we are not going to demo it that much because there is another KDE talk just uh, after this talk in the first desktop room, uh, which where will show the, all the new improvements of KDE 4 by, by demoing it. So we are just uh, more or less uh, quickly giving an overview of, 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 uh, of some specific stuff. But if you are interested in KDE 4 in general, then you are very much invited to, to visit the talk just after us. Yeah. And um, whatever you see in the general talk, um, remember, you'll see it best produced on OpenSUSE. So, Kerry, um, it's the desktop search tool for Beagle. That is being uh, extended now for Striggy for KDE4, Stefan Ben is working on that. And that means that you'll be able to use the same search tool uh, using either a Beagle or a Striggy search backend. So all of the high performance searching you've heard about the Striggy offers will be off will be supported by Kerry. Yeah, you, you could actually use any other search engine as well. It's not uh, in any way restricted to anyone. We will just implement uh, a specification of Xavier, which both uh, Beagle now provides and uh, Striggy implements. So um, you, you could have another backend for another search engine if you want to. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to hand over to Dirk now, who's going to tell you a bit about our planning for KD4's presence on the next release of OpenSUSE. Thanks. Um, this is our current schedule, OpenSUSE 11.0 will be released uh, this year in June, and we will maintain it at least for two years, uh, which also means that the KD version we are going to ship is the one that we will maintain for that time. So, there's no uh, Thing as uh, we only maintain it for half a year or things like, like that. We, we will maintain it for a full period of time. Um, we have the problem that we want to meet the expectations of our users and our customers, uh, which means they are used to, uh, to use a very featureful and stable KDE code base. Um, but on the other hand, we also want to provide or prove that KDE 4 is already ready uh, for an enterprise platform. Which, uh, which means that we, we are in a bit of a, a difficult situation that we want to prove that it is, it is ready on the other side. We are a little bit uh, unsure or we have concerns about uh, the future regressions which we uh, have in KD4.0. Our, our main motivation is that we want to ship the state of the art in, in KDE and we want to make sure that OpenSUSE is the primary KDE platform. So what we are doing right now is uh, within the alpha phase of the 11.0 series, uh, we ship KDE 4.1 or the 4.0.2 version uh, as soon as it is released. And we uh, do a little bit of backports of applications that are currently only developed for KDE 4.1 and that are not a part of uh, KD4 that over the series upstream. So we uh, have, for example, improved the uh, backported improvements in Plasma, which are essential for the user to be able to use KD as a, uh, as a primary desktop. Um, we do this for, for two reasons. One, uh, the first reason is that we want your feedback. We want to know what, is, what are your problems, what are your concerns, um, why would you, or what do you, what would you want to have improved uh, for KD4? Um, and, um, I'd like to point out that we use the same code base for the 10.3 packages in, in desktop as well as for 11.0. So if you don't want to try installing 11.0 alpha or beta, you can still give us useful feedback by using the 10.3 packages. 
as I already mentioned, we um, we target a feature in quality parity with KD3, which is currently our main concern. So we're maintaining a blocker list and uh, slowly drilling through the blocker list and fix the problems as they come up. So if you have uh, things that you consider a blocker, please uh, give us input. That's very important for us. Um, an alternative plan, because uh, in case we we are not happy enough with KD4 at all, what KD4 at all provides, we might ship a 4 at one beta, because we have this advantage because we we are quite close to the upstream schedule for KD4 at one. So we would have the key advantage that we can ship many more features and improvements and polishing that is currently being done in the upstream repository. Uh, on the other side, we are a little bit more concerned that as we have to ship a beta, it's, it's obviously not final and we might have um, some stability problems. If, uh, if, if that was the case, if we did ship a beta, then we would ship a, a 4.1 final via mm -hmm. online updates as soon as 4.1 final was released. Exactly. We would maintain, maintain both uh, situations equally. In the, letter in the second case, um, we would provide an online update to the final version as soon as it comes out. A couple of open topics which we are currently uh, investigating is uh, what pin notifications we want to ship. Um, as you might know, the upstream uh, didn't release uh, the pin application for 4.0. So we have two options. We either ship the KD3 versions, which has been proven for quite a long time to work reliably and has been extended in the enterprise branch uh, with new features and a lot of uh, enterprise ready goodies. And this is basically a very safe code base which we could use and we currently ship. But the other option would be as the porting of this enterprise um, application suite was already finished to, um, to KD4, that we shipped uh, the new KD pin for, from KD4.1. So even if you would, we ship a, a 4.0 based uh, KDE, we may then ship 4.1 based PIM so that you get KML to, to contact to, yeah. could be very exciting. So right now there are no, no packages of the PIM, uh, PIM packages for, for, from KD4.1, but we plan to provide them within the next week. So we uh, have new, another news entry about them, so if you want to try them out, no, don't try them on your um, live data for the first time, maybe. Uh, and please give us feedback, so we will probably announce that separately. Uh, we are also currently very much discussing um, internally and with the community, especially uh, which application is shipped by default, because we from, from many applications, it's not quite clear there are two. There's a KD3 version and a KD4 version. The KD3 version is often as good to maintain as the KD4 version, so we have to basically say do we want to go with the, the new version or do we want to go with the more stable version. Um, I, I'm mentioning Amorak 2 here because we really like it, it's, it's a lot of a big improvement uh, over Amorak 1. Uh, on the other side, uh, the upstream developers are currently, I think, not that interested in, in us shipping it because they would get a lot of bug reports and a lot of uh, um, yeah. feedback that they don't want, that they don't appreciate at the moment because there are so many things that I haven't decided upon yet. So we, we use the opportunity here to meet with them and uh, talk to them and see what their input is. Another open topic is um, what level of theming and open source customization we want to provide uh, to our KDE. This is mostly a time issue, I think. Um, KDE is, is, is made modular enough that you can just change any look and feel you want. But we, we would uh, still like to have an opportunity to touch on it, so we want to give it a little, a little bit of extra. And we, yeah, we're currently thinking about ideas on how to do that. So we've got little things like the start menu we showed you, um, and like window decoration that has a little geeko in it, but it's just, it's not real functional, but it makes it reminds you of using <coughs> so it was a default set of <coughs> An open topic is the backward compatibility or the upgrade path, which is more or less the same thing. We want to provide 
or uses the, the possibility to, to be able to upgrade it from k 3 to k 4 which is currently not that much uh, focus from upstream, so we are we are investigating and uh, making sure that you don't break your k 3 installation by just installing k 4 or you don't break your k 3 uh, stable installation by just drying it out for one yeah. So that means adding things like uh, making sure that session management to KD3 applications works in KD4 environments. Um, we haven't gone so far as to uh, importing configuration yet because we want to make sure that people's KD3 configuration remains compatible. That's another thing we're thinking about. No. Uh, I think the idea we have here is to, to, to implement uh, it in such a way that it will import your configuration from, from KD3 if it is available but won't override the KD3 application, so KD3 configuration. So you, you always have the choice to go back if you want to, but you will automatically get your uh, old configuration improved as uh, important as soon as possible. So, a little bit about how to write a KD4 application yeah. in 99.95. Yeah, it's, a, it's very, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very stupid idea. And <coughs> Often enough, we, we face the problem that we have to automate some process. I, I'm pretty sure you, you are familiar with this problem that you you do a, a certain job a lot of time a lot of times during the day, and you're just annoyed by the tools that are available. So you write your own script and improve it just for you, uh, personal uh, use case. So one uh, use case we have uh, pretty frequently is to watch the build status in the OpenZoom build service. So we have, uh, as we said earlier, a lot of uh, packages in the uh, build service infrastructure. So we want to monitor them and see as soon as possible uh, when one of the packages fails to build so that we can fix the problem. And, um, Which you want to do right as well, because you want to see when the latest uh, resync uh, re of the packages comes with the update upstream uh, repository and then you can install those packages, right? So this is kind of thing useful to you too. So we want to show you that it's just as easy as writing a little bash script that you could use in the command line. It's just as easy to write that as a GUI script, which will give you a nice integrated look and feel. Yeah, it will also give you a, a clear advantage. And clear advantage we show by, by just showing uh, how much the tools we use right now uh, are not up to our task. So we just show the two possibilities you, you have right now for watching how the build status of your uh, repository is. There's one that's a command line tool, OSC, which is used to, for as command line access to the build service. You can call this command OSC project, which allows to see an overview about your packages in a certain repository. And there's also a web front end, which you can also use for, for doing the same thing as you did. Really, just show it to you. Uh, this is the output of project, which allows if you have more than two packages. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but... Yeah, find the failing package, please. <laughs> on, on, on the diagonal, you have all the packages, and on the vertical, you have all the distributions that builds for, and then you have these lines and these dots, and the Fs here show the yeah. failing packages. Also, so we're so going to try to figure out which package uh, failed for which resolution. I think it's not very obvious. Yeah, and so it's even worse, because it just starts over again. It's a space not enough, so you have a lot of trees of... Yeah. So you're going to be starting up K ruler at this point and trying to like look and line things up using K ruler. Yeah. But that's the next alternative. So we think, oh yeah, there's a web front and web front is are cool. We can use that. So we start it up and, and watch the monitor and see, oh it's all green, so it's nice. Green is uh, open source right? Yeah, it has to work right. So we scroll a little bit more and then we see this. <coughs> There's a package that failed. Can you see it over, over there? The red one? Which package is it? Yeah. The problem is uh, the for some reason the web UI uh, doesn't allow you to see the package and the repository at the same time. So yeah, you have to, there's this little scroll bar at the bottom, and you can either see which the, the package names, which you saw before on the left side. Or you can see the build state, but you can't see both at the same time. So you're you're always uh, going this and this, that way. Well, obviously, build from web service is an open source program. You could download it and fix it, but by the time you've got it uploaded and resync with your rest of the project and actually deployed on the server, 
you might you package you might have finished building. So this is the quick way around. Uh, so obviously, as we said already, we are really lazy. We, we don't have enough have time. We just want to have something now. And so we just sat down and let's see how fast we can get something that's more useful, just a little bit more useful. And the target was to be faster than uh, the time we need to present the slides, which is not that much. So, uh, in addition, our pre requires is uh, we have no idea how the build service works and we have no idea how the build service can be accessed over the API, API interface, which is very well documented, but we still don't want to read uh, a couple of pages of documentation. We just want to have a very quick result. Uh, we do know a little bit of Python. We've, we've used it for a very small comment line script before. And we also have heard about QC before. So we thought we can combine it all of them. First of all, we will just sketch out a little UI with the QT Interface Designer, which is a very useful tool to just uh, design your interface. Uh, I've cut off the, the actual toolbars and stuff where you can drag in your widgets and just align them. But this is what we came up with. It's, it's a very simple interface. It just has a label. This is a combo box where you can choose which repository we want to show. And this is just the overview which we fill in with data. It's a table widget, so it's kind of like a spreadsheet. You'll see that in a minute. <coughs> so, okay, now we have an interface. So we only need this implementation. It can't be that difficult, right? So, as we use Python, uh, we realize OSC is also written in Python, so instead of learning how the build service API works, they're just going to use OSC for that. And we're not going to run it in command line and try to parse the output we saw before and try to figure out how to present it nicely. We just import it because it's written in Python, so we can just import it. So what we're doing here is uh, actually over there. We just import the OSC uh, tool in our uh, new Python script and uh, initialize it. This is the only magic line we had to figure out. Uh, it took a few minutes to figure that out. And we, we import also the uh, user interface which has uh, the site interface designer. Yeah. So we, we were not actually writing any code so far. We only designed the UI and we imported, just set up the basic things and uh, imported the OC for doing the actual work. And we imported the user interface which we just designed. There's no code written in any way so far. So running running designer on the output of that designer is a Python um, module <coughs> called Overview, which has a class in it called UI Main Window. And you'll see that used in a minute. So this is the slide you probably can't read. Um, the interesting thing is that this is the whole script. It's not very routinely written in any way, but this is all that we have to do. What we're doing here basically is to just fetch a result with the OSC interface, which is uh, given up to us as an XML document. So we are passing the XML document and then just run through the, the, uh, the XML tree and figure out which names and values we want to uh, keep up and keep them in the list. And over here, we are doing very stupid and simple things. We just fill in the, 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 the output. Uh, into the table which we designed in the yeah. designer. Is anyone here a real Python wizard? I mean, if you look at this, you probably say these guys really don't know Python because they've written a yeah. nested for loop that you probably could have written with BASIC on a Commodore 64. Yeah, but, as we said before, we, we, don't, we are not Python wizards, so we, we just said uh, there are probably many more elegant ways to express what we did, but this, is, this just worked for us. We just wrote it down once. But the important thing is we go through this table of build results and for each one we create a table widget item which is a box <coughs> in that spreadsheet, which we'll now show you. So this is the result after uh, maybe 20 minutes or something like that. Um, as you can see, we improved on all the, the, the things that are uh, discussed before. We can see at the same time which package failed for which distribution. And we can quickly switch through them if you want to. Yeah, so you've got this combo box here, you can select different repositories, you can type in your own repository and it'll go away, etc. And uh, the interesting thing is, is that KD4, even though it's a very new release, we already have pretty much complete bindings um, in Ruby and in C Sharp, as well as for Python. Uh, and when it comes to pure Qt, we also have Java bindings. KD4 Java bindings, not there yet, 
Tail widget, the headers stay in one place while the content scrolls. You can only see what this. We got, we solved our little artificial problem that we set for ourselves at the beginning to make something where you could see the results and see the headers. Does anyone have a build service repository? Okay. Want to want to check it? What's your uh, build service uh, account? Home uh, Funky Penguin. Funky Penguin, big F, big P. Yeah. Big F, big P. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> You <laughs> 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 watched it this morning, didn't you? <laughs> oh. 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 Sorry, there it is. You just need to prove that it's uh, not a scale application, it just works. Uh, if we are happy that it uh, works, it works. Okay. Uh, you might find it useful, you might not find it useful, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to, to write your own solution in a very simple way. And if we had more than 20 minutes, we would um, set up a couple of key notification events so that when your repository changes and uh, a package goes from failing to building, you get a nice little pop up, standard KDE pop up saying um, KDE base 3 plasma has now been updated. Pretty easy. Not too long, uh, we only have uh, five minutes left, so uh, we have two options, either going into QA mode uh, right at the moment, or just, yeah, it's probably just, uh, do we have any questions? Mm -hmm. The question here in front. Yeah, um, you talk about that, you've got complete like, bindings. And I'm using before, they're pretty good, but um, are they packaged? Act in the build service, you can find key bindings. Is that equal to a go? Almost. Almost. They have a, a couple of problems, but they, they will be packaged very soon. Okay. Uh, I was personally working on them uh, last week, but I don't have enough time, so they're really next week. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sta the stable bindings are there Python dash KD4. Okay. Any more questions at the back? Your scratching um, table. Uh -huh. Item is that released as a package or is it just that script? We've just packed it up, actually, just that script, but we could, we could blog about it, make it in, up to download, or we could put it in, um, in KDS again somewhere and get your input as well. Okay. If you want to improve it, then you can just use it. Yeah, it would be useful. <laughs> it would get a lot more useful if we, had, if we didn't have the constraint that it had to fit on one slide. So. A lot more things with it. I mean, there are so many of these improvements. We could we could add a filter, for example, that you can only filter for for failed packages, which would be useful for really uh, big repositories. But yeah, our main constraint was we want to get it done just now. We don't want to spend half a day on improving and and, and a lot more features. Just want to show that this is really possible to do it with very very little effort. Any other questions? We go to one CD quick. How much time? Okay. Uh, I just skip over a few slides. So, what you probably already know if you used the 10.3 version is that we changed uh, the way you have to install OpenSUSE. So, previously you needed just this stack of file. Uh, to install the user. Before that's a little bit too much, so we did uh, one CD install. Our target was uh, we download one CD and you get something that is roughly complete. Uh, it should be comparable to the default install of the DVD media. The DVD uh, media is obviously a lot larger and has a lot more applications, but not all of them are installed. But, uh, Essentially, a very small set of the DVDs installed by default, but you can always select more packages. So 
So we want to make sure that the default set it fits on one CD. Uh, to achieve that, we, uh, we had to cut down the little uh, couple of features. Uh, the main feature we have to cut down is the uh, language support. The DVD ships with uh, internationaliz internationalization for a lot of languages, uh, which don't fit on one CD. So we have to decide for one language with the possibility to create new one CD versions with another language uh, selected. So it's not hard for it to one uh, to a one specific language, but it's just hard for it to one language. Um, if that's a big problem, you can just extend the installation process by adding online repositories before you start the installation. So as soon as you add online repositories uh, during the installation, you will automatically get new features. If you select a country different than the US, you will always automatically get the, the language uh, translations for your country. So. The problem we faced at the beginning was uh, the default set was roughly one gigabyte, but we only have 700 gigabytes available. So how do we make that work? Um, we came up with a, a list of things we can do. We remove optional parts of the distribution, which are not that much required by users. So this was quite a bit of effort to find out what, what do the users want and uh, what do they need not so much. Uh, this is still something which is ongoing, we, we try to improve the set of packages, so you have feedback about that, things that you're missing from the one CD media, and why you download the DVD media, just provide us the feedback. Um, a big chunk of the uh, package set before was actually the selection of funds. So, in media way uh, we could reduce the amount of data was to just reduce the amount of funds we ship by default. Um, we also changed uh, our, the way our distribution was built to split our languages from the package previously languages. They're usually part of the main package. So we installed the application and also ins installed the uh, translation at the same time. Uh, we set up uh, a very simple mechanism to be able to automatically split out the translations and also be able to provide them uh, automatically again. So, um, this is what we came up with, we created language bundles. Language bundles basically provide you with all the translations you need for the one CD media, but, but they are just packaged for one language, so you install one bundle, basically per language. So what, what you're doing is, if you install a one CD but you want the French version, you will uh, just add the French bundle and get your French uh, translation of the things you need. Um, uh, this is just um, the most interesting thing. Uh, I just sketched all uh, how the size uh, on the CD is wasted. Sorry. Or how it is spent. You can see that a fair amount of stuff is actually just a basic uh, how to boot your system, the base system, comment line tools. So it's not a stripped down system. You have pretty much uh, the comment line stuff still available. You can also see that Open Office is a big chunk on the one CD version, and only this is, is less of an important, is actually a KDE specific part. Okay. Well, and uh, the important thing to remember is that um, we're doing that so we can get KDE CD out, but the improvements to the distribution that that causes are available to every to every other desktop to the base distribution to DVD. It means you get a smaller distribution, you get more applications, you get faster downloads. Hope it's useful. Thank you for coming.